Good morning. And welcome to Winnipeg. And welcome to a different perspective. Now I know somebody's going to say, well now I can't see out the window. <laughs> well, these top two views here is out my front window. One's looking that way down the street and the other's looking that way down the street. You actually get to see it better. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you, you, look at, you get to see the uh, bird feeder better too. <laughs> now, we did come back to the model table yesterday. So we're going to have a roll back. And uh, I got our, our photo etch pieces cut here. I got the first coat on. And I put them on last, put the coat on last night so they're nice and dry. I'm going to quickly do the second coat here in a few minutes. Um, probably while you're watching the rollback. Uh, oh, and I, I did make the pizza yesterday. Did not go well, but I'll explain that, uh, you know, when it comes to playing the pizza music. <laughs> okay, you know, uh, maybe we should uh, roll back here and just see how it is. I got to this place here. I know you can probably just barely see these little pieces of photo etch, but... Uh, uh, yeah, you'll see it better on the rollback. So, let's roll back. Okay, I'm guessing we've got probably, oh, about an hour here this evening before I start getting drowsy and... Alright, let's just sort of reposition here. I'm going to put a little zigzag in this one. Now the trick is to get it to bend between those two stanchions that are just almost right side by side. So I've got to get the nose down so it's sort of pressing down on that one stanchion that's sort of underneath there. Alright. Now I'm going to use this blade here to get underneath it because the other one is it's sort of dull. Alright, there we go. Now, is it bending where it's supposed to? Yes, it is. Okay, that looks like 90 degrees to me. Let's take it out and have a little peek here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now, now the problem is, we have to bend this other one the opposite way. And needless to say, I can't, I can't put it in like this, because I can't bend this part down. So I'm wondering if maybe I could use the, the back of this Andy's uh, bending device here, and just sort of stick this in. I'm going to try that. I don't think I've ever done anything exactly like that before. Yeah. Let's uh, turn it around here and we'll use one of these. Okay, I've recomposed just very slightly here. Um, better lower this down just a little. Like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to clamp it down there. Now, all being well, this should bend. Oh, it looks to me like it is bending at the, at the rails, though. Okay, I'm going to back it up and shove this in. And bring it down. Oh, went too far. 
you know what, I might have the camera at a bad angle and you can't see. Maybe if you were looking more straight down, you'd be able to see better. Alright, let's try it now. Okay, I believe that that's more or less got it. Yeah, that, that actually looks pretty good. Okay. Now, this is the only one that has to be bent. I'm going to do the other the other one exactly the same way. Uh, the the uh, the other two pieces are, are straight, so. Okay, I've got everything mounted in self-locking tweezers here. And I I know that where the where the tweezer is hanging onto the onto the piece of railing I can't paint there, but I'll be able to re re grab later uh, and and touch it up. At least that's the plan. I'm I'm, I'm moving in here a bit. Okay. There, now you can see what I'm talking about. Now maybe this brush, you, you might be thinking, well, that's, that's way too big. But my experience is that I can actually paint something like this quite well with the large brush. I just sort of flood it on and, and uh, go, go all the way along the, the rail. And I can almost paint both, both sides of the rail at the same time if there's a lot of paint on, on the brush. Uh, well, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I, I will put on the macro lens and, and see, uh, uh, you know, if I, if I can do this on camera and uh, at least one of them. So uh, let me recompose here and uh, we'll just see what we can do. Okay, I think if I use a tin like this, and lay it on, lay the tweezer on it. The height to the lens will always remain the same. This lens that I'm using right now is not too critical, but the macro lens is. So I'm going to use something like this, and uh, let's get the macro lens on and see what we can do here. Now this is the thinned out 77. I think I'm going to have to try and get some off of my brush and get rid of the paint that's built up in the corners there. It's a little bit on the thick side. there and a little mark there. I marked the tin. I've, I've got the tweezer taped to the tin because let's see if we can carefully turn this over here. Now I realize that wasn't very careful was it? Whoops. Now one of these one of these uh, rails is going to be the bottom and one's going to be the top. I don't know which will be which yet. Maybe the one with the tweezers hanging on to will be the uh, will be the bottom because it'll be getting messed up with the CA glue trying to glue it onto the deck. Now that's just the first coat, so we're going to be seeing uh, photo etch glinting, right? Um, 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead now and do the other five pieces off camera because it's it's just uh, it's just too hard to try and, and do this the way it is. I'm not complaining. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm having a good time here. Okay. Okay, my little paintbrush is all cleaned up, ready for the next time. And uh, we got the first coat on those uh, six little pieces of photo etch here. And uh, I can sort of see a little bit of shininess in the odd spot, so that means they're still wet. But uh, I think that by morning that should be dry. I gotta be careful I don't rub them against the, the cloth here because then I'm gonna take it right down to the, uh, I think I almost did there. Anyway, we'll worry about that in the morning. So, uh, yeah, all being well, we'll be seeing you in the morning. Well, it is morning. And I did give these a second coat while you were watching the rollback. <laughs> now, I gotta remember, don't spin these too fast because it makes people dizzy. <laughs> I can see that. I don't know if I told you this story or not, but uh, when I was taking my flight training, there was a particular RPM that you wanted to avoid. I think it was around 1700 RPM. And the reason being is that if the sun was flashing off the propeller at a certain speed as it was rotating, it could uh, have some sort of effect on you that would, uh, uh, you know, cause you to either pass out or something. Anyway, I forget the details on that now. <laughs> yeah, 1700 RPM, that's not an RPM that you use too commonly anyway, so didn't need to worry about it. Yeah, anyway, the uh, second coat here is basically dry, but I want to give it a little bit more time. We uh, can probably work on those, uh, putting those little vents on the sides, those three vents that we get, that we made up. So uh, uh, anyway, you've seen these now. Okay, F37 on both sides. I'm probably only going to video putting it on the one side because of the other side it'll be the same thing. And it goes right there. Now, I don't know if it's a good idea to be picking something up with a wax pencil. Hey, it glued to the paper. Well, let's uh, break it loose here. I guess when I laid it on the uh, piece of paper uh, yet last night, it was not completely dry. Okay move this out of the way. I don't think that this is going to be in my road here. Um, I'm wondering if maybe I should be using tweezers for this. Might be just a little bit more sure because it doesn't take much for that to fall off. I, I really do like this wax pencil for picking up photo X, but like I say it might not have been a good idea picking up uh, something that's already been painted. But, you know, what do I know? Without getting the microscope out and actually looking at it, I I, I can't tell for sure. Um, okay, let's... Uh, where's my tweezers here? I just like to want to do a dry run. Actually, I gotta be honest. The uh, the wax pencil was was a lot easier. That's for sure. Well, we'll see. Uh, now, what kind of glue are we gonna use? We're gonna use. Uh, well, I probably want to use something thick that isn't gonna run down the sides, and I don't want to use a whole lot of it. Okay, I have recomposed here. I just want to sort of set this up so that I can quickly grab it, and I'm going to try and use our Tamiya Extra Thick. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's not all that thick. I 
I don't know if I can put a, a dollop of, of this stuff on there or not without it running down. Because if it runs down on me, it's going to dissolve the paint. Now, almost looks right it's uh sorry about my big ugly thumb here it, it almost looks like it's got to go up just a smidge and like a fraction of a millimeter that, there that looks pretty straight yeah I, I think that's going to be okay now I was looking in my monitor here when we were doing that other one and I realized that uh, uh, you could not actually see that too well. You were too far back. So I'm going to do this side, even though I had said I wasn't going to. And uh, once again, I want to sort of stand it up here so I can grab onto it quickly. At least that's the plan. And uh, I'm going to uh, put the macro lens on here. try very hard not to get my fingers in your road and I'm going to use Mr. T's poking device here because I'm going to try and smear it around so that it gets into that into that box that's on the side of the superstructure. And I think I did. I think that's pretty good. I think I did better on this one than I did on the other one. Okay, we just got one more smaller one to go. Now before we put our little L13 in place, I just wanted to show you here where there were a couple of those vents that have already been molded into the side of the superstructure. I don't know why they 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 did this and they didn't do the others. Um, maybe because the others were not recessed into the into the bulkhead like these are. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But what what I'm getting at here is I'm just wondering if maybe I should try and put a very very small amount of uh, panel line accent color on that. Uh, you know that the black maybe. And uh, just just to bring out those, on the other hand, it might wick its way off the side and you know and get itself onto the uh, because this is this is not clear coated. Um, I guess maybe I could very carefully just try and clear coat just part of this, or maybe this one entire panel. Um, see, my my problem is that when I I have found that when I clear coat something. Yes, the panel line accent color will work better, but then the the clear coating does change the the uh, the color. Usually, it seems to darken it. Anyway, uh, just thought just a point of interest here. Um, well, I'll think about it. We'll see what happens. In the meantime, let's move over to the one where there is no detailing imprinted in it. Can't let go of it. I'm 
we're going to have to do some touch up there because that that glue is going to glint and we don't want glint and glue so I'll, I'll just very carefully I'll just very carefully go over that with the number 66 because this this superstructure is 66 and this vent is 70 the 77 so if I do get some of the 66 on the 77 then I can take the 77 and do the top of it. The main thing is to get rid of the, the shiny glue because if the light hits that it, it really it's almost like a little light goes off on the inside of the superstructure. I just I just glanced in the uh, in the monitor it's it's not straight here it's got a the bottom should come to the left if I can. Sorry about my finger. Okay, so let me check the monitor. Yeah, it's some better, maybe if I could bring it up now. Okay, let's quit poking at it before it gets worse. Alright, this is cooked chicken. Sliced olives, sliced mushrooms, and pizza sauce. Mozzarella cheese to glue it together. Maybe if I stood on it. Now this is a sliced turkey breast from the deli. It was actually a gift from somebody. glue. This is supposed to be pizza pepperoni. That's enough. Okay, now I know that this is going to flow over. That's why I've got it on this large pizza pan here with a uh, silicone. Yeah, it, it's going to flow over. There's no question about it. That's all right, we'll clean it up after. All right. Well, here's what's happened. Let me sit on here. We had a, a bit of a disaster. Now, it could have been worse. Could have maybe had to call the fire department. So after I put it in the in the oven, I set my oven to 400 degrees and I thought well 35 minutes should be just about right. Because the oven the oven did not start out hot, it started out cold. Now now that's fine, that, that would have been probably probably okay. But um I set my, my uh, little timer for 35 minutes and then after uh, then I went on doing other things like editing out the video of when I was preparing this and so on and uh, by the way I haven't taken it out of this thing so this is going to be the first time you're going to see it along with me uh, it's been in the fridge overnight here uh, it, it's going to taste good I know it's going to really taste good but, but let me get rid of this thing here I just threw it on the floor. I will wash it though before I use it again. Um, maybe. And uh, okay, so I'm I'm editing out my stuff, and then I think I was watching a some sort of documentary on Don Rickles or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, I start to think, and you know, it. I haven't heard my timer. Did I? Did I miss it? And then I, I, I suddenly realized it's it's going on about an hour, and. Uh, uh, well, I go, needless to say, I run out to the kitchen and I check and I'm not smelling smoke or anything. But as you can see, the, the cheese here, 
Oh, and by the way, it did not boil over. What happened was it started to boil, I guess, and it got actually smaller because it, the moisture and everything boiled away. All right, let's just see what this what this is actually going to look like. I think that on the inside it's going to be all right. And and as I as I say, uh, uh, it's it's going to taste all right. Yeah. Okay. Now. Normally, I, I would not touch this with my hands if uh, uh, I was going to be serving it to you, at least not when you're looking. And uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I, I have a thing about somebody else touching my food. I, and I, I know there's other viewers like that too. Uh, let's not get uh, pizza on our green cloth here now. Now, how many should I get out of this? See, a quarter would be too much. You know, these are these are pretty thick. I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide them into uh, into eighths, and uh, I'll have an eighth today, and then an eighth of it next week. And oh, it's cutting so good. It, the reason it's cutting so good is because it's cold. So normally it wouldn't cut this good. I'm going to freeze the other seven pieces. At least that's the plan. On the other hand, this might taste so good today. I'm not going to have it right now, by the way. I'm just cutting it because I'm going to have to wind this video up. Now, you know how I like to be honest in my workshop videos. That there was a little piece of cheese there, and it was kind of kind of burnt like this, and I peeled it off, and I wanted to eat it, ate it to see what it tasted like. So I ate it last night. But you know that, that's that's all right. You know you can you can see the uh, chicken on the bottom, and the olives, and the mushrooms, and uh, yeah, there's uh, pepperoni, pepperoni right there. And, okay, I, I think we beat this to death, haven't we? That's it for pizza for today. Now, I was right. That did taste good. It tasted a hundred times better than it actually looked. Now, we've got three little boxes that we have to get on. One, two, three, here in step 42. And then uh, the railings. But the railings are gonna have to wait until until uh, the next episode. Um, in fact, I think that in all likelihood what I should be doing so I'm not really rushing through this uh, is uh, cut today's episode off. Uh, you know, we, we saw the main thing, the pizza. <laughs> uh, yeah. A anyway, um, thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.